here. Beginning of the new project. I want to make a knife. Here's some drawings that I made. I want to make a small knife. I'm not sure I want to wear a neck knife, but something in that size range. A couple of shapes that I've drawn. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. There's the last one. I think that's the one I like the best. Here is a cardboard template that I've made for that. I think this will be nice. I can use this for carving as a, as a small carry knife. Um, I'm imagining an eyelet here and a, uh, a lanyard with something back here. Perhaps a uh, complicated uh, large uh, paracord knot or something that I can that I can grip. They sometimes do that with a lanyard to make a short handled knife so you can get a better grip on a short handled knife. I can get three fingers on this really well. This back here will have a uh, will not be sharpened right to the back edge so that won't be a cutting hazard. But that's a shape that pleases me. Now as I do projects especially in new hobbies every time I do a project I want to add to my tools as well as my knowledge and experience and I have something here that you've seen in another video and that's my uh, belt and disc sander this is a 4 by 36 inch belt sander it uh, I'm not sure what I paid for this but I've had it for many years I, it seems to me like I maybe got this at a garage sale for 20 or 25 bucks um, I made the uh, crook knife with it and I've since purchased uh, some nice belts for it um, these are uh, metal cutting belts I'm looking for a belt so I can give you the brand I don't know I don't remember the brand offhand but it's a good quality belt now the grinder itself or belt sander, I'm going to use it as a grinder. When you cut metal it's a grinder. Um, this is I think exactly like the Harbor Freight grinder. Probably made by the same company. The only difference that I've noticed is uh, how the um, there's a work plate down here that's out of the shot that you can set an object on or back up something so that it doesn't race down the belt. Um, and it mounts on the other side of this. It mounts over here. I know it's the Harbor Freight one mounts over here. But other than that, it seems to be identical in every way. Um, fairly cheesy tool. It works well. Um, I've cleaned it up. Um, got rid of the noise. If you remember in the earlier videos, it was uh, the belt was actually touching the, uh, the metal guard and making a clanking sound. It rubs, runs relatively quietly now. A little bit, a little bit of noise to it. Um, now you'll notice there's a big gap here, and I don't like that. Um, this area, this flat surface, you know, there's a sheet of metal back here. This is called the platen, and the belt should be up against the platen. Now there were several ways I could have possibly fixed this. I could have made smaller. Uh, wheels for the belt to go around and thus brought it in closer. That would have been complicated. I could have moved these slots back and put them in the right place which is how the manufacturer should have made this uh, but that would be a lot of work too. I mean I could easily cut that back and get it in position but then I'd have to fill this with metal or make some kind of plate so I could hold the axle over and I'd have to do modifications on both ends of it. Just too much work. Um, and this is what I'm concerned about. And I'm going to exaggerate in the drawing a little bit, but this is our platen. And if our belt is off of the platen, when we push against the belt with a piece of steel, the belt is going to go under the piece of steel and back out to its around the next wheel. Okay? And that means we're never going to be able to grind something flat. And the other thing that it means is if I set a table here at 90 degrees to the platen, and then I make a jig to hold a knife, let's say at 22 and a half degrees, or, or whatever bevel angle that I want to put on the knife, 
I won't really have the number of degrees that's built into my jig. Say I have a jig like this, a magnetic jig that holds a knife. Because this belt, I'm not pushing against a, a fixed object. There's a gap between it and the platen. So how I decided to fix that was with an eighth inch piece of aluminum. Here's this piece of aluminum. And it fits back here nicely. Now, it, it's holding the belt out slightly, maybe ten thousandths or something. It would have been nice to have just a slightly thinner piece, but I notice on some, um, some knife makers, they'll actually have the belt making an angle across the, across the platen. In other words, they'll have the platen loaded out against the belt tight. I'm not going to do anything that exotic here. I'm just going to take this eighth inch plate and bolt it on. I'm going to use these socket head, flathead uh, fasteners to do it. They're 832s. The first thing I've got to do is this piece of aluminum is about three-eighths of an inch too long, so I've got to cut it. Um, and, I, and I'll radius both ends so that there's no sharp edges to wear on the back cloth of the belt. Um, so this is really the project that I need to complete so that I can do a better job of sharpening the next knife. Sharpening it and forming it and everything. Now I'm gonna, this will actually happen over a couple of week period because I'm heading out on the road for a business trip, but I was able to get started tonight. Putting the lead in here, or lead out, depending on whether this is the top or the bottom. A nice smooth transition. Now this is a little narrower since I've put that bevel on there. Got a little bit of a saw curve mark I'd like to get out. that with a finer file. I don't want to leave any edges. It might machine away the cloth of the belt. And I'll hit this with some fine sandpaper as well. Now we're the right length. Now I need to mark where these internal parts are so that I don't uh, put any drill any fasteners there. If it matters to you, you should never mark on aluminum with a graphite pencil. That mark will never come out. You'll have to grind it off to get rid of it. So I've got a uh, magic marker here, permanent marker. And I'm just going to locate these approximately. I'm going to stay well away from these areas. So 
Now I know that my screws need to be below this line and above this line. And if I put a second set in the middle, not in that location. These are thin nuts here because they can be, when you lower the table to horizontal, they can get in the way of the bolt of the belt. And I actually, one of these was missing from the saw and I had to make it. I want to get this, get this part off. So I can do this operation on the drill press. Of course, I could do this with a hand drill. But it'll look best if I do it on the drill press. It'll just be, everything will be straighter and more aligned. And it will please me more. A lot of the noise from this, uh, tool comes from this belt guard. Can you hear that sound? This is some of the noise in this grinder, is these cheesy bearings. I may replace those just to make it run quieter. They're probably very inexpensive. But those noisy bearings impart vibration. Now those are very bearings quiet. like this impart uh, vibrations and noise into the tool which makes every rattly thing on the uh, tool produce noise. So I probably will look to change these. Shouldn't cost too much. I'm not sure what it will take to remove these bearings. I'm going to strike this with a plastic hammer. Never strike steel with a steel hammer. I've got the bearing caps off. Yeah, what's interesting is these are shielded bearings. They have a metal shield instead of a rubber seal, which lets dirt in. Probably going to have to use a bearing puller to get those off. We may come back to that later. So we're going to put a screw at 1, 5, and 9. And I'm going to set that in from the edge, half an inch.
can't find my proper scratch all. I have some tools in storage from when we last moved. And it's probably in one of those boxes. So one, five, and nine. And I'll get the cross marks in here in a moment. <clears throat> 